Now in the last part of this question then, we've got to find the final speed of B after the collision. Now there's two ways that we could actually do this question. We could use this impulse equation on B, or we could use the conservation of momentum now that we have the final velocity of A from the first part of the question. Just to remind you, the final velocity here we found out from the previous part was u over 4. So we'll just mark that in as u over 4. Okay, so I'll show you both ways that we can do this then. We'll start off with what I think is the quickest, easiest way is the impulse equation. So we'll consider B. And if we use this impulse equation, we need to select a positive direction. And I'm going to select positive in the direction of the impulse, I. And that's going to be to the right. Obviously, it doesn't matter which direction you take as positive, but you must stick to it throughout the question. So, if to the right is positive, we've got the impulse, I, which is 7 mu over 2. So, 7 mu over 2 equals the final momentum which is mass times velocity. The mass is m in this particular example and the final velocity is vb. And that's to the right and that's in the positive sense. So we can just write that in as mvb. And then we've got minus the initial momentum the mass times the initial velocity. The mass is m so we can put that as m and the initial velocity was 3u but to the left and that's in the negative sense here so you've got to remember to put m times minus 3u. So that's our impulse equation so take care over the signs because that's the place where I'm sure a lot of people can trip up. Tidy this up and we could times through by 2 and we would get 7mu equals twice this term, 2mvb. This is going to be a positive term and we're going to double it so we're going to get, get plus 6mu. You can see that m is in every term so you could cancel that out, divide through by m in other words. We're after vb so if I was to take 6u from both sides we would get 7u minus 6u leaves me with u and that equals 2vb. So if I divide both sides by 2 you end up with the final speed of b is u over 2. u over 2 is positive so therefore the direction of b is correct. Okay so that's one way. I did say that you could do this another way and that was by the conservation of momentum. So we'll just put that down here. Conservation of momentum. So what is the conservation of momentum? Well it is the momentum before impact equals the momentum after impact providing no external forces act on the system. So let's have a look at the initial momentum. What we've got to be careful of though is to take a positive direction. I'm going to take positive direction to the right. doesn't matter which way you go, but stick to it. So the momentum before impact is going to be the mass 2m times 2u. So we've got 2m times 2u. That's the initial momentum for A. Then we plus the initial momentum for B. So it's, it's the mass, which is m, times the velocity. And the velocity here is 3u, but it's to the left in the negative sense of this arrow. So that's going to be minus 3u. So be careful there. This is the total initial momentum. Now it's got to be equal to the final momentum. So we start again with A. So its mass is 2m multiplied by its final velocity. VA, which we found from the first part, was u over 4, and it is in the positive sense. So that's going to be multiplied by u over 4. So we have 2mu over 4. Plus now the momentum of B, so that's the mass m times the velocity. 
and VB we've got going to the right in the positive sense so that's going to be MVB. So M is in every term here so again we could cancel that out just take that out like so and I can see that we can clean this up we've got two quarters here so in other words we can cancel that out down to a half so we've got half U. So let's just tidy both sides up what we've got here is 4U and then we've got minus 3U so that's just going to be U equals and then here we've got a half U U over 2 plus VB so if we make VB the subject by subtracting half U from both sides we end up with the final velocity of B being U take away a half U which is U over 2 so you can see obviously we've got both answers agreeing by two different methods. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this question.